I'm Major General Mike Edwards. We wanted to take a few minutes of your time to talk about diversity in the National Guard. But instead of hurting people into a conference room and asking them to divide up into groups to point out their differences, which only reinforces stereotypes, we interviewed some members of the Colorado National Guard and asked them to tell us what diversity is and why we, the Colorado National Guard, are better when we understand it. Today we're going to discuss diversity in the workplace. Generation X was born between approximately 1964 and 1980. They're also this is not something the military would show, this is for certain. I, if they were to show me this, I'd be like, are we in kindergarten? No, I, I don't think diversity training works. I think maybe diversity awareness might be a better way to put it, because if you look at it as diversity training, what are you training someone to do? Be different? I think we can accomplish that on our own. When we sit through a class, we're listening to something. We're intellectually receiving data. And we're being told, think this way, act this way, do this way, view people this way. And all of it may make a lot of sense. But how we actually are responding to people is not necessarily intellectual. It's usually emotional. It's usually about how we feel about them, about how we feel about different cultures, how we feel about different races, how we feel about people with disabilities. Uh, all the baggage that we bring into our lives, we bring into these interactions. So to be simply told that we're going to think differently, we're going to act differently, expects that the way we're told is going to affect the way we feel, and that generally doesn't work. Diversity is not a course, it's a culture, right? So we can teach people that, to be diverse, but if, you, if, you, if in action you're not, if, if you betray your own, what you're training on, what you're telling people, it, the course isn't what makes people believe, it's what they see and how they, it's what happens. And I think as, uh, as an organization, we really, we do embrace diversity. I mean, you don't, you don't have to go very far in any organization to see it. If you ask five different people, you probably get five different answers in what they think about uh, when you mention diversity. Uh, you know, people tell, tend to gravitate towards different races or different genders, uh, and it is those things, I think, but it's also differences in, in background, differences in makeup, whether you're uh, from the city or you're from a rural area. It's, it's a, just a different uh, upbringing and therefore probably different thought processes that, that you have as, as an individual person. And of course, gender and, and race and religion and those type of things feed into it as well. Hi there. Hi. Nice day, huh? Yeah, finally, right? Where are you from? Your English is perfect. San Diego. We speak English there. Oh, uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> where are you from? Well, I was born in Orange County but I never actually lived there. I, uh, I mean before that. Before I was born. Yeah, like, well, where are your people from? Well, my great-grandma was from Seoul. Korean. I knew it. I was like, she's either Japanese or Korean. But I was leaning more towards Korean. Amazing. Yeah. Ham Shasina. There's a really good teriyaki barbecue place near my apartment. So I actually really like kimchi. Cool. What about you? Where are you from? San Francisco. But where are you from? Oh, I'm, I'm just American. Really? You're Native American? No, uh, just regular American. I came from Taiwan. I immigrated to, immigrated to the States in 1991. I'm a first-generation American. Uh, both my parents are survivors of the Holocaust. I'm a first-generation American. So the way that I was raised and the way that I think about things has a lot to do with the, right, the way that I was raised at home. Actually, I grew up in poverty where a lot of my peers didn't trust authority. They, they ranked uh, being in the military as, as being in law enforcement, basically. Uh, originally, I'm from Winchenden, Massachusetts. Small town in Ohio, and it's very farm and whatnot. New Mexico. Being raised in western Nebraska, uh, my dad always told me the story how his mother told him you can't play with those Russian kids. And my dad told me, he says, the only reason my grandmother was afraid of them was because they spoke different. 
Oh, sorry, I don't speak Japanese. 彼女は日本語がわかんないんですよ。あ、あの今日のおすすめは何ですか？すいません、ちょっと英語わかんないんで。でも今の日本語だったよね。そうだよね。彼らのご注文の方はいえだから彼女はアメリカ人なんやってそうそう日本語全く分からへんねん、うん、そうだよお連れの方たちハンバーグですかねやっぱり We're what we call traditional soldiers We come from society We come from、uh, employers throughout our, our economy、uh, That gives us an advantage We are innately communicators We are innately Folks, our soldiers, leaders that should be able to work with our first responders, our government, other military organizations. By nature, we should be pretty good at that. So, there,、uh, one more reason as guard soldiers, we should be more diverse. I think the guard, one thing that we have to offer that perhaps active duty doesn't, is we know each other for a long time and, and we, we grow up as a guard family. And I think that perhaps because of that, We do a better job of, of, of pulling ideas and thoughts and concepts from, from our people. So, diversity is very critical in what we in the military do because everybody brings something to the table. We could all take jabs at each other, but we all need each other. The Army occupies territory. Our primary mission is to bomb, keep planes in the sky. We all have tactical medics, and at the same time, we, we have a joint mission with the Navy in order to keep satellites in the sky and communication. Like, There is no job that someone doesn't have. When the Navy's abroad, we have the Coast Guard that guards the coast. And they usually go against people who really aren't military, they're just armed and trying to do something illegal. So we, we need every branch of the military. And it's,、uh, it's funny that we're all able to take shots at each other. And then at the end, you buy each other a beer. It's pretty cool. The percentage of young adults considered obese is now four times what it was just a generation ago. Add to that men and women ineligible because of a limited education, criminal records, or illegal drug use, and the report concludes almost three quarters of potential recruits are unable to enlist. I don't know if there's some, such a thing as、uh, the affirmative actions、uh, in, in, in the forces when we, when we come to、uh, recruiting people and whatnot. But in general,、um, I think we, as an organization, are more proactive、um, educating our people about the differences in,、uh, in culture, in race, in color.、Um, that we are more receptive to people from, to, to people from different backgrounds. The, the term equal opportunity is a little bit of a, you know, a misconception because the truth is, we don't all start off equally. We, we, we come from different backgrounds. We, we were raised differently. We were exposed to different things. And we come to the table、uh, thinking differently about certain things. And that's the one thing I do like about the military is it takes all types and everyone has to fit within the regulation and do their job, regardless of your background. We don't really want to lower our standards or change our standards too much, but yet we have to become adaptive. And where I'm going with this is as we look at the, the new missions that are coming in and、uh, perhaps the, the type of personalities of folks that do different types of missions, like cyber, for instance, the, the perspective most senior military members have is that, whew. We're gonna, we may have to change our tattoo policy. We may have to change our, our piercing policy because, in their, and again, they're stereotyping, but they believe that there's a lot of the culture that's very, very, very good on computers and very, very good on cyber that may have piercings or may have tattoos that we don't agree with right now. They may be overweight, but yet they've got a mind that is amazing and could do wonders for our cyber network, for our nation. I think, regardless of whether it's your military family or your at home family, you're constantly going to be dealing with growing personally and growing with them. And that's going to take exceptions on both sides. So you have to learn each other, you have to develop a relationship with people, understand where they're coming from. Because I firmly believe if you don't do that, anything that you try to do, whether it be training, whether it be teaching, whether it be guiding, they're not going to listen to you unless they trust you. And that's a big factor in becoming a whole if you're coming from different backgrounds. I feel that if you don't know your co workers, then you're probably not a good co worker yourself. <laughs>
Welcome to the bubble. Coming in January 2017, the bubble is a planned community of like-minded free thinkers and no one else. So if you're an open-minded person, come here and close yourself in. The bubble is a diverse community and safe space for everyone. We don't see color here, but we celebrate it. And unlike the rest of America, anybody is welcome to join us. One bedroom apartment start at $1.9 million. When people talk about diversity, they usually utilize the same thing and it always emphasizes a common theme that no one sees differences or no one recognizes the difference between one individual or another. And I think that's completely asinine and backwards. The beauty in diversity is being able to recognize that you're different, I'm different, but we're all people. The American service member has to be able to plug in uh, in, a, in a multinational setting, has to be able to embrace kind of the unknown, a, a different culture, a different, different environment than what they're used to. It's important that they be able to plug in be effective the moment that they hit the ground, despite language barriers, cultural barriers, and so their willingness to embrace that which is unfamiliar to them is really critical to their success. The best place for that to start is before they leave the United States, and it has to start right here at home. Our mission is bigger than any one of us. We need each other. Even if we could somehow clone 50 of you to make a platoon of super troops who think alike, that wouldn't be enough. The reality of what we do requires each of us to rely on others, and that requires a level of trust. There's airmen I learn from every day where they come in and they say something and you're going like, huh, never thought of it that way. Why? Because they come with a completely different perspective on life, and um, I think that's important. And I hope that's what the young guy gets out of it. Come in here and be a sponge, absorb it all. Absorb the good stuff, see the bad stuff, and make sure that those, those things that you see and hear that you think are inappropriate or that are wrong is that you, is you help eliminate that from the organization. I have definitely learned to surround myself with people who don't think like me. And if I, I know where my blind spots are. And so if I know where my blind spots are, I can fill those with people that don't think like me. Uh, the last thing we want to do as leaders is, ha is surround ourselves with people that are thinking like us and then we just get into groupthink. We are expected to deploy anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. And the reality of that means we're asked to work with some people we have never met before and we're expected to form competent, cohesive teams within a matter of hours. Understanding the diversity of our people is an enormous part of being professional and competent. And this is where we run rings around the civilian sector. You already know this because you live it every day you wear the uniform. Everyone is different. No one is identical to anyone else, not even identical twins. This is what it means to lead, to learn who you're working with and to help them shine. By doing that, you make your team and the Colorado National Guard the best organization possible. And believe me, those who are outside of our organization see what we do and respect our professionalism and camaraderie. Keep up the great work. Thanks for your time. <laughs>